Hello. Thank you. My name is Leah Bree, and I'm going to talk to you this evening about Greenleaf, which is a young organization in Denver. We're doing urban agriculture, thank you, Daphna, with high school students. Um, and I have a favor to ask of you before I get started. One of the things that we do at Greenleaf is snaps. So if we hear something that we really like, if you hear something that you agree with or that moves you, please let me and let the other presenters know with some snaps. Let's give it a try. Thank you. Excellent. All right. So my background is in community organizing and union organizing. And about four years ago, I, uh, for my own health, decided to get involved in urban agriculture. And um, I started volunteering on a couple of local farms in Denver. And I had an amazing experience. The work kicked my butt. And I discovered that there's a really special way of connecting with other people over growing food. And I wanted to bring that into my work life. And I spent spent the next year cooking up an idea for Greenleaf, um, researching, developing it, and founded the organization in December of 2008. And Greenleaf represents my own best thinking on how to develop strong and powerful youth leaders, how to transform our cities into more sustainable spaces, and uh, how to work for food and social justice. Thanks, guys. Some of my colleagues are here. <laughs> oh, you guys are sweet. <laughs> Um, and my journey starting Greenleaf has been wonderful and amazing and also super challenging. And um, the most important piece of advice that I can share with you this evening is this. Be vulnerable. And I know that that is not the message that most of us have been taught about effective leadership. But I think that it is really important for a number of reasons. Um, it's important in order to genuinely connect with other people, particularly across differences of experience and identity. Um, it's, order, it's, it's really important in order to give generously and truly of yourself. Um, because being the leader of an organization, being the person who carries a new project into the world, can be excruciatingly painful. And you need to be willing to forgive yourself when you make mistakes. And you should make mistakes. Because if you're not making mistakes, you're not taking enough risks. And that is key as well. Um, and while it can be very painful, thank you, to be vulnerable, I believe it is vital to discovering your own core strength and acting from that place. So why Greenleaf? Um, as you can see, there are a number of positive and negative reasons why we do Greenleaf. But here's the deal. There are millions of people in this country who don't have access to fresh and healthy food. And that may be for a number of reasons. It may be that there is not a grocery store in their neighborhood. Um, they may not be able to afford fresh, healthy food. They may not know how to prepare it. And they may not have the time. And this is not an accident. This is due to many decades of bad food policy and structural inequality. But the other thing that you need to know is that these neighborhoods that are considered food deserts are also abundant in other resources. And they're abundant in the exact resources that we need to build a better world, including land, including people power, including tremendous knowledge and community support. And that is why Greenleaf is transforming vacant urban land into farms and engaging youth leaders and developing youth leaders to do this. It's literally the place that we can dig in on all of these different issues because it's where they all come together. And what you're looking at right now is a picture of our newest farm site at 25th and Arapaho. This is what it looked like in February or maybe March of this year. Um, but Greenleaf is not only about the practical aspect of putting food into people's hands who need food. It's really about developing strong youth leaders, and particularly from communities that are traditionally marginalized. We are working with youth who have experienced great racism and great classism in our society. So let's be real for a second. Um, Many adults, and particularly white adults, have been trained up to perceive young people, and I'm particularly talking about young women and men of color, as threats and liabilities to our society. And we recognize at Greenleaf that these youth are actually a tremendous resource of skill and talent and strength. And that is why the Greenleaf community is made up of high school students um, from across the metro area, ages 14 to 20. They are coming from low and middle income families. Families. There are seven languages spoken on our crew. Many of the youth come from immigrant and refugee communities. And many of them also come from food insecure households, where they do not have regular access to fresh, healthy food. 
And this is Daisy, Tomas, Dewan, and Alejandro taking a little break from farm work, and they're beautiful, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So Greenleaf is located in the wilds of northeast Denver. This is our first farm. Um, the youth decided, very ambitiously, I think, to name it Mini Eden slash Mini Eaton, because we're really punny at Greenleaf. It's at 38th and Williams in the Cole neighborhood. And Cole is an urban food desert. It's also a really abundant community in many of the ways I've outlined. Um, and that's why we're located there. And I want to own one thing, really really quickly and really importantly, I think, this is not my community. I am a white woman. I have experienced tremendous class privilege. I grew up in the suburbs. I live across town. Um, so I am an outsider coming into this community. And I feel very compelled to work here. And I feel that I have a lot to offer. But I think that part of being vulnerable to me in this context means recognizing that I am an outsider. And that means that I need to be really intentional about listening to people who grew up in this community and uh, supporting their own leadership. And so the vision that I founded Greenleaf with many years ago has changed for the better many, many times because it's being co-created continually by our community of youth and adults. And this is what that same land looked like about four months later. We transformed it. We grew 1,000 pounds of produce there. So how does Greenleaf do what we do? How do we engage dozens of youth and hundreds of community members in growing and distributing literally thousands of pounds of fresh and delicious produce? Um, I came up with these five key things that we live by at Greenleaf because I think that they're applicable to any organization. So here we go. Number one, um, our shared vision. Our vision is strong because it is shared and because it is always evolving. And we are continually at Greenleaf partnering with our youth interns to best support their leadership development and figure out what food justice means for them and their families. Um, and as an adult leader at Greenleaf, I am continually striving to let go of my own ideas about what is going to be best and create the space and the support for our young people to lead in that capacity. Um, and that means putting the youth into leadership roles at every possible opportunity. When we have a site visit with a potential funder, it is the young people who are the experts who describe what we do and why we do it. Um, they lead our community canvas. They run everything about our farm, including what we grow, how we grow, where it's going to grow. Um, and the youth crew makes consensus decisions to guide them. For instance, they use a consensus decision-making process to hire. And they run our hiring process. That means that they call references. They uh, conduct interviews. And as a group, they decide who to hire onto our crew. And as you can see, we take great care to support one another at Greenleaf. This is a picture of the crew doing some morning yoga during our summer program. It's a pretty much daily occurrence during the summer. Thank you, Laura. Um, safe space is really important. And to us, safe space means co-creating a group culture in which everyone is welcome, no one is harassed, and everyone is supported and challenged to be and become their own best selves. And we call it a safer space because we recognize that it's hard to do that. It takes great vulnerability and tremendous challenge to step out of your comfort zone in order to create and maintain this. But stepping out of your comfort zone is how you learn. And that's what we're committed to at Greenleaf. Um, so in this photograph, you can see the group setting individual goals. And what we've asked each person to do, youth and adults, is come up in front of the group and write down a goal that's deeply personal and very ambitious and own that in front of their community. And it takes a lot of vulnerability and courage to do that, to really own something that you care about and that scares you a little bit in front of your community. But it's really wonderful to have the support of your community in making that that goal come true. I think that accountability is really important for every community as well. And many professional situations I've been in as an adult, people have struggled with accountability. We at Greenleaf use a method called Straight Talk. And that was developed by the Food Project in Boston. They're an amazing organization. They've been doing urban agriculture with youth for 20 years. And they're really generous about sharing their tools, including accountability. Um, so in this picture, the Greenleaf youth are giving Straight Talk to Grace, the young woman seated in the gray and black sweatshirt. So what we do is go around the circle, and everyone takes turns giving Grace a feedback sandwich. They'll tell her something she's doing really well. They'll give her a change or a challenge to make to improve her performance at Greenleaf. And they'll finish up with something else that she's doing really well. And I think that 
we all need these skills, and we all need to receive this kind of feedback from our community, not only because it feels really important to be celebrated for what we're contributing and what we're doing really well, but also because I think that deep down inside all of us, it feels better when we F up to have somebody in our community call us out on it because they know we can do better and to do so in a loving way. We work hard at Greenleaf. We have really ambitious goals, and it takes every member of our community to make them a reality. And as I mentioned, the youth own and drive every aspect of our organization. We even have three young people who sit on the board of directors and take responsibility for guiding the organization. And they are more than capable of doing this. I find that my primary challenge as one of the adult facilitators is giving these young people enough responsibility to live up to their tremendous capacity. So here you see a couple of youth, uh, actually a bunch of youth filling up our raised beds at our new farm site, March of this year. This is Dewan, Andrew, Amadou, and Daisy planting seeds at the beginning of the year. Those are the seeds that went into our farm. This is Jorge um, transporting a hay bale from our 25th in Arapaho site to 38th in Williams. As you can see, we've transformed some uh, baby bike trailers into veggie wagons and hay wagons, and we use a fleet of donated bicycles to commute between the two farms. They're about a mile apart. This is the crew weeding at Mini Eden this year. Um, weeding is nobody's favorite job, but everybody pitches in to get it done. And you would be amazed at the depth of conversation and humor and bonding that can happen over shared work like this. This is the youth planting and uh, weeding at our farm earlier this summer. This is our bee committee. These young people have taken responsibility for caring for the green leaf bees. You can see them off to the right behind Amadou. This is Duan and Alejandro harvesting the season's first watermelons. They were delicious. This is Jorge and Winichette coming back to the farm after spending the morning canvassing. And this is one of the most important things that the youth do. They go out in the communities surrounding both of our farms and knock on doors and talk to people about food. What do you like to eat? Where do you buy it? Um, and this is all a way that the youth have devised to engage people in the work of our farm and the work of creating food justice. And I help train the young people to become canvassers, but I don't knock on a single door. They negotiate and manage all of the community relationships that we are building. And if you've ever wondered, this is what 200 pounds of produce looks like. We harvested this last Saturday, and I think it's important to mention that the youth crew has decided that they will take home 10% of our harvest to feed themselves and their families. We donate 20% of the harvest to local hunger relief organizations, and uh, we sell the remaining 70% on site at our Saturday farm stands. And the youth have decided to let people name their own prices at the farm stand, and that is to ensure that people can afford the, the produce that we're growing. All right, I probably should have said this first because fun is one of the most important things at holding a community together. Um, what you see here is Team Unicorn celebrating their victory at the end of the summer. And in case you ever need to know how to cheer for Team Unicorn, I'm going to teach you. So you pretend like you're going to play rock, paper, scissors. You have to assume the position. And then you go, one, two, three, unicorn! <laughs> There's a member of Team Unicorn in the back. Woohoo! <laughs> All right, we play a game every single day at Greenleaf because we need this to connect with each other, to celebrate, to laugh, to get through a hard work day, whatever it is, humor keeps us going. And I have learned that vulnerability is a key aspect of having fun as well. As an adult working with super cool high school students, I have learned that I need to be willing to model and demonstrate the depth of vulnerability that I expect from them. And when you're having fun, vulnerability often means being totally ridiculous. Luckily, this is one of my superpowers, as evidenced by this wildly unflattering photograph. Um, here I am demonstrating how to play a relay game that we devised for the youth earlier this summer. And me being unbelievably ridiculous gives them permission to be unbelievably ridiculous. And wonderful things can come from the kind of vulnerability that is shared with a beloved community. And that is what I have attempted to do with you all this evening. I hope it's been useful. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.